the launch the brand new crp 429c that i just got sent to me by king bolin and um it's pretty nice i've been playing around with it i'm gonna check this out let's uh do a diagnose and have it auto detect it's like a slot machine sweet See, now this is uh, more than just generic OBD2. This is going to be, um, this is going to be like manufacturer specific codes that we're going to read here. Look at that, generating a little diagnostic report. That's kind of cool. Okay. So in the, in the DME module, we've got BSD generator, code for the BSD generator. I have no idea what that is. Throttle position controller jammed briefly. Okay. Okay. So that's, uh, the throttle that got jammed briefly. Who knows when that, that code actually got set. Uh, it could have got set way before the rebuild. I haven't reset anything um, on, you know, and, and I don't know at this point if these are history codes or whatnot. Um, so immobilizer under voltage, that's probably when, you know, the battery died or something. Steering angle sensor supply, power supply, side sensor door right. That's in the fuel pump, interesting. Interesting. Okay, and then nothing in the transmission and nothing in the transfer case module. So, okay, that's cool. Let's, um, it's nice that we can get like an overall, okay, so we can get an overall right here. I guess we can enter that one. Uh huh. Okay, so read fault code. You can clear fault codes, and then the other one was live data. So, this is okay, they're both history codes, which means they're not current. So, they're not like currently problems. So, that, that they wouldn't be much help to us anyway, so that's okay. Um, let's see what else. We can read data stream here, and you can see that we've got like all these different, we've got categories of different inputs or PIDs that we can read. And let's see, we wanna go for, I just wanna show you something, oxygen sensor control. So you can see we've got adaptation mixture, bank one additive, multiplicative. These are technically your fuel trims. These are going to be like the OEM fuel trims. Um, but the thing is, they're not going to be really helpful to, uh, to kind of like diagnosing anything because they're not equivalent to generic OBD2 fuel trim percentages. These are different. You know, an additive percentage, that's basically uh, what happens that, you know, the, the, the fuel correction that happens at idle. And then multiplicative is the fuel correction that happens at engine speed. Um, but it's basically, it's, it's, you know, I, uh, you're not going to be able to diagnose anything by looking at them. There's just really no, it, there, there's no clear patterns in them when, you know, you can't really see fuel, or you can't really see vacuum leaks in them. You can't see, um, rich conditions with them very well. You can't really tell if it's just, uh, I've, I've never used them for doing anything. So, uh, this data I think is actually not going to be useful for us to uh, look at anything. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to just go into the generic OBD2 function because this is of course a full-fledged reader with uh, live data on uh, the OBD2. I do think their software is a little slow on this particular part. Well, it's just because my car happens to, or BMWs happen to be the last one in the list. So as you can see, six readiness completed, two not completed. I know that one of them is the EVAP and the other one is going to be the, uh, here, let's show you. The other one's going to be the O2 sensor. So canister purge monitor, that's the EVAP, that's not completed. And then the O2 sensor monitor is not completed. Oh, looks like it graphs that, that's interesting. So, we need to figure out why. Just let me show you that we have no codes. So, it's interesting, no fault codes in, in OBD2, but you saw that there were two errors in the, in the DME module. That's the difference between, you know, generic OBD2 mode and, and uh, manufacturer specific mode. You know, there are a lot more manufacturer codes that get stored in the engine computer that don't necessarily have associated uh, DTC codes. So your, your, your basic scan tools that are only going to be, be able to do generic mode to, uh, OBD2, they're only going to read so much that I'm going to tell you about so many problems. You can always have more problems that uh, might clue you in. In this case, 
uh, the, the problems that it does have don't give us a clue as to what's wrong. So we're gonna need to look at some live data here. So we'll go into that. And um, I think at this point, we need to have the engine running and I actually wanna kind of warm it up a little bit. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's get that started. All right, what do we wanna see? You know what, let's just see everything. And you know what, what I want to do guys, I'm just going to let this sort of warm up and then we will, uh, we'll come back. Okay. So actually I just wanted to get into closed loop mode, but it looks like, yeah, since this is a, um, a somewhat newer BMW and I think it has the, uh, the air fuel sensors on it, it entered closed loop pretty fast because those things, uh, can, can get going really fast. So we're already in closed loop. You can see our, our idle is about 750. So that's, okay, that's good. Mass airflow, 4.5 grams. Okay, that's about normal, I would say. 3 to 3.5 to 4 grams on, on, uh, on an M54 engine is about, about normal for idling. Okay. Okay, page two. Processing, please wait. Great, great, great. Okay, so our long-term fuel trims are at 10%, just under 10% right here. And our short terms are at 14%. So right there, I don't know how that's not even set in a code yet. We, we must be almost on the way to set in a code because that's, that's almost 25% total fuel trim right here. So um, let, me, let, let me do this. Let me just show those PIDs. Let's go back. On select, let's just do. See, I always, always take a look at fuel trims because they're just a, a great, uh, they're just a, a great picture into how your engine's running. There you go, right there. Yeah, we're we're in, we're running incredibly lean right now. Now, when you have a lean condition, your next step, your next step is always going to be to run the engine at speed and see what happens to your lean condition. Does it improve or does it get worse? So we're just gonna. Hold our foot on the gas and go to around 2,500 RPM, something like that. And it gets better. You can see now our total fuel trims on each bank are around seven, seven to 10. And that means that we have a vacuum leak without a doubt. You can see our, our short terms go right back up at idle. The reason they go back up is because <clears throat> um, at engine speed, the engine is actually producing less vacuum. So there's, there's less of a chance for air to get into where, you know, that vacuum leak and, uh, and, and deliver more unmetered air into the engine. So when you're running it at speed, that vacuum goes down and it sucks in less, uh, less pirate air, less, less, uh, less unmetered air. So when we see that the fuel trims are higher at idle and lower at engine speed, without a doubt, that is a vacuum leak. So cool, now we have something to go on, great. Okay, so now what we need to do is take